Hey, what's going on? This is Seth from the RE Tipster blog, and in this video, we're going to talk about 10 WordPress plugins you can use with your website that'll make your website look better, perform better, and stand out from all the other websites in your space. Stick around. All right, so if you are running a website in your business, there is a fair chance that you are using WordPress. And WordPress makes a lot of sense for a lot of people because I won't say it's like the easiest thing to figure out, but most people, if they're determined enough, can figure out how to use it. And it's pretty easy to make edits and do just pretty basic things with it. And one of the cool things about WordPress is that there are tens of thousands of plugins on the market. And plugins are just these little pieces of software that you can integrate with your website that will allow it to perform a certain task or display things in a certain way or basically just do something that the website couldn't do on its own. So for example, you know, there are plugins out there, say if you wanted like a special calculator on your website or if you wanted pictures to be displayed in a certain way or if you wanted like an opt-in box to show up where people can sign up for their email list, there's plugins for all these things. And when it comes to these plugins, a lot of them are free and some of them you actually have to pay for in order to use them on your website. And they're typically not terribly expensive. Some plugins are very, very well made, even the free ones. And some plugins are not well made at all. They don't do the job very well. They're kind of glitchy. They can even crash your website. So it's important to know, you know, if you want your website to perform a certain task, which plugins are gonna do that job the best. And running several different WordPress websites for years now, I've had lots of experience with a lot of different plugins. Uh, and in this video, I want to tell you about 10 of the plugins that I've used that I've had a consistently good experience with. And I think, you know, depending on what kind of business you're running or, you know, what, what sort of things you're doing, you know, specifically, I have a real estate business, so that's kind of how I use it with my website. So, you know, these plugins, they're not all going to make sense for everybody. But chances are, if you kind of follow along, I'm willing to bet you'll find at least a few new ones that you probably weren't aware of that could be pretty helpful for you. So, and I will say some of these plugins, like specifically the paid ones, I do have an affiliate relationship with some of those. So if you end up clicking on the links beneath this video and you know purchasing something through those links, I'll most likely get a small commission from that. So let's dive into it and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so the first plugin I'm going to show you here is called Gravity Forms. And Gravity Forms is a plugin you can put in your website that will allow you to create very dynamic, detailed forms that people can use to fill stuff out and submit them to you. And the first time I saw that Gravity Forms was 39 bucks a year to use on one site, I was a little turned off by that because I know there's a lot of other plugins out there that will do a similar thing for free. So I was like, why on earth would I pay 39 bucks a year for this? That's crazy. But it wasn't until until one of my VAs convinced me to start using it that I realized how helpful it really is. Because if you're just looking to put together like a contact form on your site where a person fills out their name, email address, and a message and then sends it to you, then no, you absolutely do not need Gravity Forms for that. That's a very simple thing that pretty much any form plugin can do for you. However, if you're trying to create a more in-depth, detailed submission form, like for example, this right here is the submission form form on my buying website and you can just kind of scroll down and see how long this thing is and there's all kinds of different fields in this form where it's really nice to have the ability to customize these things like for example when I want somebody to just tell me what state they're in I can do this drop down form or say if I want to put specific options in here there are drop down forms for this as well and say if I wanted to make this form longer or shorter I mean pretty much anything you can imagine that you would want to put in a form in terms of customization you can do that with Gravity Forms and it's very, very easy. This is what the back end looks like when you can create these forms. And you know, it's very easy to just like drag and drop this stuff. So if you wanna change the order of it, when you wanna create a new one, there's all kinds of different options you can choose from. It's just a very robust, solid forms plugin. And I know it's been around for a long time and it's very well respected in the WordPress community. So if you need to do any kind of a complex submission form on your website, I think Gravity Forms is definitely a solid option to work with. And 30 
39 bucks a year. I mean, if it's a form that's going to be used a lot, that is well worth the price considering what this plugin can do. So that's the first one on our list. The next one is right here on Code Canyon. It's called Interactive US Map. Very descriptive name, I know. And this was a plugin I found after searching for hours and hours and hours to try to find a interactive map that I could embed in my blog so that I could sort of explain to people different things that applied in different states around the United States. And I got to tell you, there are a lot of different mapping solutions like this out there, and a lot of them are okay. But the reason I like this one so much was because this was a plugin that I could actually put in my site. So it wasn't hosted on some third party website and drawing from there. And it's also mobile responsive so if you're looking at this on like an iPad or a phone the entire map is still going to be in view and it's going to be just as easy to see which is a huge thing that was something that was really hard to find on a lot of the other mapping solutions out there and it also allows you to create multiple versions of this map so it's not like you can only do one and then that's all you can do with the plugin I think at the time of this recording you can do up to three so it's pretty decent deal and I'll just show you a couple that I've actually put together on the RE tipster blog as you can see this is how it works when you kind of hover over the map, you can see specific information that pertains to each state. And you can also control what the color looks like, both when it's just sitting there. And then also when you hover over each state, you can change what the color is going to look like. And in addition to that, you can also embed links within each state. So say if I wanted to have somebody link to more information or evidence about the statement I'm making regarding each state, you can just click on the state and it will open up a new page. So it's it's a really awesome mapping solution that just has a lot of different functionality and flexibility. And all in all, it, it is by far the best solution I could find for WordPress sites. So it's definitely a good one. If we look at the back end here, this is another one of the maps I created. And this is what it looks like when you want to change up what these things look like. So for example, Alabama. We wanted to take a look at that. This is the place where I can link to a third party site. This is where I can, you know, say specifically what that state is going to uh, say in association with it. And then I can change the color. I can have the link open in a new page or on the same page. Pretty much anything you can imagine, you can do it with this uh, mapping plugin. And it's also worth mentioning, you know, I'm using this plugin for the purpose of showing a map of the United States. But say if you're looking to use this for a different part of the world or maybe the entire world, Canada or Australia or India or the UK, I mean, you name it, pretty much every notable place, this developer has also made plugins that go for those areas of the world as well. Go ahead and scroll down here. You can see all of these different parts of the world where you can get a very similar plugin that works pretty much the same way. So if for some reason you need to refer to a different part of the world, these options are all here and readily available. Let's go ahead and click on this Europe one. See, this is how the one in Europe works. And also keep in mind, if you want to highlight like certain cities within each place, you can do that too. So it's a very flexible, well-made plugin and it's pretty cheap considering everything this plugin can do. So it's definitely a good one to check out. Okay, now the next one I wanna show you is called Buttons X. This is also available on Code Canyon. And what this plugin does is it allows you to create all kinds of different buttons that you can embed on your website. So this was something I know I actually struggled finding a solution to this kind of thing for years because I couldn't find anything that had good looking buttons that would really draw the user's attention to what I wanted them to click on and find out more about. And this kind of solves that problem in my opinion because it allows you to create a very clear call to action that they can click on. And I'll give you a quick idea for how this works. I used this not long ago on the RE Tipster blog when I was putting together a blog post uh, showing readers about a crowdfunding platform called Realty Shares. And this was actually a crowdfunding platform that I have an affiliate relationship with. So if people click on my link and sign up, I get a commission for referring a person to Realty Shares. And here is that blog post. And I'll just kind of show you how this works. So one way to include links on your website is this right here. So you can see this text that I made bold with a link in it. So, you know, somebody could click on that and go that way. So, you know, that, that totally works. I've done it that way for years, but say if you really want to catch somebody's attention, you can create one of these buttons with the Buttons X plugin. And as you can see, you know, when I hover over the button, it sort of stands out, kind of grabs your attention, just looks a little bit more animated and dynamic. And, you know, if somebody clicks on this, it's going to do the exact
exact same thing and send them to the Realty Shares homepage. So it kind of does the same thing. It just makes it stand out a lot more. So it's really hard to miss. It's a very clear call to action. And it's not just an image where you click the image. It actually has some animation to it and it can be animated in a lot of different ways. And actually another plugin that's sort of an add-on to the Buttons X plugin. So once you have Buttons X, you can also add this one here called Morphing Buttons, which does even more stuff. And this is pretty cool too. If we go here and click on Morphing Buttons, let's just go click some of these examples. So say if you want to put this on your website, say if somebody clicks on this right here, you could have terms and conditions showing up separately as kind of like a pop-up. Or say if you wanted to put a video in your listing or something like that, you can click on that and then the video will pop up. Or for example, if you wanted to put a subscribe button, you can make it look like this. And there's all kinds of different ways you can tailor the animation to show up differently based on whatever you think looks cool. So you can also do like a full screen thing. I'm not really a huge fan of this one, but whatever. But yeah, that's, uh, that's Buttons X and that's uh, Morphing Buttons. Okay, so for this next one, I've actually got two plugins that I'm gonna show you because they do a very similar thing, but there's just some slight differences in the look and feel and in the options they bring to the table. Both of these plugins are social sharing plugins so that people can not only follow you on social media, but you can also use these to make your content more shareable. So say if you have like a property listing and you want people to be able to share that with ease, or if you have a blog post or you name it, and you just want people to click to tweet or click to share on Facebook or you know click to fill in the blank. Both of these plugins work great for that. The first one here I've been working with since about 2014 and it's just a workhorse. Like it does so many different things and has so many different options in terms of how the social information can be displayed on your website. I mean if you want just as many potential options as possible I think this is probably going to be the go-to one because there's just a lot of functionality built into this. Another one that's a really good option here is called the Monarch plugin and it does a lot of the same stuff but what I like about this one is that it's a lot more user friendly. I thought it was much easier to just get to the end result faster. With this one right here, easy social share buttons. I really like all the different options it gives you, but it gives you so many options that it's kind of easy to get lost in the shuffle. Like if you've got a very specific idea of what you want, you can probably get there with this plugin, but there's just so many things to sift through that it's kind of almost cumbersome to get there. And granted, once you get there, you never really have to touch it again if you don't want to, but it's just kind of a process to get to that point. Whereas with Monarch, it gives you, I think, fewer options, but all the options that they give you look really, really good. And the interface is just easier to use and it's harder to get lost in the process. So I think if you're more of a WordPress novice, then Monarch is probably the option for you. But if you have a very specific idea of what you want your social buttons to look like, then easy social share buttons may be the better choice. So either way, I've used them both. I think they both work great. Just kind of depends on where you're coming from and what you want your social buttons to look like. So either one of them can be a great option. Okay, the next plugin is a free one. It's called Pretty Link Lite. And Pretty Link is something I heard about a few years back from Pat Flynn at smartpassiveincome.com because he uses this plugin a ton and I have since started using it a ton as well. And the great thing about this plugin is that it can take any link, and I mean literally any link to anything, and it can make it much, much shorter and easy to remember, which is part of why they call it Pretty Link. It takes a really ugly link and makes it pretty. So I'll show you how this works. Right here, for example, this is on my blog. Blog. Say if I had a link that looks like this. That link is pretty much impossible for any normal human being to remember. Or for that matter, if you were trying to repeat that to somebody else or just try to get somebody to remember that, pretty much impossible. That's a very complex, complicated link. But with Pretty Link, you can say whenever people type in retipster.com forward slash RL. Whenever people click on that link, it's going to automatically forward them to this link. So it's a very, very easy way to take any URL that is complex, whether that be on your site or on some other site. And I know this happens a lot whenever people create like property listings. It'll have their website URL forward slash and then maybe like the address of the property with dashes in between them. I mean, even that is too complicated. If you want anybody to remember your link or even if you want to be able to repeat it for any reason, it's pretty much much essential that you find a way to shorten that link and not only shorten it like I'm not talking about the Google or bit.ly URL shorteners or anything
anything like that. It's got to be shortened to something that people can actually remember. And this is the perfect tool for doing that. And I will say Pretty Link does have uh, paid versions of their plugin. And I've actually paid for it. And just from what I've experienced, it, it does have some additional tools like analytics and tracking and things like that. But I personally have not found those to be necessary for what I do. So the free version, which you see right here, Pretty Link Lite, that is more than sufficient for what I need. So it's a very powerful plugin that's very, very useful. And I would totally recommend this to anybody. So it's definitely worth checking out. The next plugin on our list here is another free one called Yoast SEO. And kind of a funny name, uh, Yoast SEO is a plugin that's been around for a while now. And it's another very well-respected plugin that a lot of people use. As you can see right here, 3 million active installs. And it's basically just a plugin that helps you improve the search engine optimization for each one of the pages on your website. So if, if there's a certain keyword or keywords that you're trying to track, Yoast will help you verify that yes, those keywords are in the title, it's in the description, it's in the URL, it's showing up in all these places and it's showing up numerous times and it basically notifies you with a green, yellow or red light that you're either doing a great job with that or you're doing a poor job with that. And I'm not gonna say that if you start using this, it's automatically gonna make your website explode in popularity overnight because that's just not really how it works. But if you're at all concerned about the searchability of your website, this is another solid and free plugin you could have integrated with your site that can just kind of help you improve this at least a little bit, if not a lot. So this is definitely what I consider to be sort of a standard requirement to have if you're running a WordPress site. This next plugin I want to show you is, again, two different plugins that do pretty much the same thing. They just kind of do it a little bit differently. And both of these are for the purpose of creating pop-ups or opt-in forms on your website. First one right here is called Layered Pop-ups, and this is on Code Canyon. And, you know, not terribly expensive, but it can do a lot of very uh, attractive, good-looking pop-ups that don't really look spammy. They just look unique and kind of cool. I'll show you some examples here on their uh, demo site. So you can go ahead and just click any of these here, and that's kind of what the pop-ups look like. And they're very sharp. They look really good. And that's, uh, it's just kind of unique. I mean, I, I haven't seen a lot of sites out there with opt-in forms that look this sharp. And I just thought this uh, plugin did a really, really good job of that. I'm currently using this on my blog in a few different spots. I'll uh, show you an example right here. Go here and just kind of click on a blog post at random. When you scroll down, you see this thing that pops up. That is an opt-in form that is running on layered pop-ups. And again, if you scroll down to the bottom of any one of these blog posts and you click on this right here, uh, this is also uh, running on layered pop-ups. So you can see, I mean, it's nothing crazy, but it looks pretty sharp. It doesn't look cheesy or spammy or anything like that. It's just a nice, good-looking way to include opt-in forms in the form of a pop-up. Or you can also even just have them appear, so they're just sort of already there on the page, so they don't even pop up, they're just there. Uh, the only downside I've found with layered pop-ups is that it's a little bit cumbersome to create them. I remember it took me quite a while to get each one of mine put together and designed and created on my own. And it's not necessarily the most user-friendly process of doing that, but it does give you a ton of flexibility. I mean, there are all kinds of different existing templates you can work from, or you can just create one from scratch if you're smart enough to know how to do that, or if you hire somebody to do that for you. So lots of flexibility here here in layered pop-ups. If you're not necessarily looking for all of that flexibility and you'd rather just have it be easy, another option here is another plugin from Elegant Themes called Bloom. And this works uh, very similar to the other plugins from Elegant Themes in that they're very user-friendly and easy to follow. And it gives you dozens of different opt-in forms you can use that can show up in any number of ways. So I'll just show you a quick demo here. So if we go here to opt-in types, let's try the fly in and just see what that looks like. Um, so that right there is what that opt-in form looks like. So pretty basic, it looks pretty sharp and it uh, doesn't really jump out at you. It's not obnoxious, it just kind of looks good and does the job. Another option here is the pop-up and see what that looks like once we start scrolling, there it is. So again, I mean, that, that's a little bit more intrusive, but you can also use it for locked content. So say if you're trying to like give away a free PDF, but only if you sign up for my email list, that kind of thing. That's kind of what that looks like. I will say the Bloom plugin is not quite as flexible and doesn't 
have nearly as many options as layered pop-ups does, but you know, not everybody needs that. Some people just want something that's easy to use and looks good no matter what, and that's exactly what Bloom is. So I think uh, either one of those could work fine. I used Bloom for a little bit on my websites, but I don't anymore because it didn't have exactly the look and feel I was looking for, and that's why I switched back over here to layered pop-ups. But again, either one can work great depending on what you need. Okay, so if you are running a real estate website that includes any information about financing, say if you're trying to sell a property and you want to offer the option of seller financing on that property, or say if you have any kind of a business that involves lending on any level, this is an awesome plugin that you can include on your website. I haven't been using it for a long time, but I discovered it just a little while ago, and it is very, very impressive just how good it looks, how easy it is to use. And as you can see here on Code Canyon, it's got an excellent rating. A lot of people really love like it. I'll show you really quickly how it works if we click on the live demo. So there's a number of different ways you can customize how this works. Once a person fills in all of the numbers that pertain to their situation, they can either just show it right on the screen or they can check to send a PDF to their email address. And in that PDF, you can even customize it a little bit to include your company logo. So it's almost like a little advertisement that goes along with them. Or again, you can just, you know, not do this all together and just have it show up on the screen. So say if we're going to do 200 thousand and by the way you can also change what these default values are going to be if you want to down payment say just 10 percent uh, 15 years calculate it and it shows us this full-blown payment schedule all this information i mean it's kind of incredible how good this thing looks and just how much information it provides and it's very easy for pretty much any user of any level of sophistication to figure out how this thing works and you can also use different types of currencies. So say if you're in Europe or in the UK or pretty much any type of currency that you want to insert in here, you can do. There's also these optional slider inputs. So if you don't want your users to go through the agony of typing out the dollar amounts, uh, they could use the slider as well. And there's also these helpful little things if they don't understand. And by the way, you can also even customize what these information bubbles say. For example, in my case, I've got a land business, so I'm not going to be using the word home, I'm going to be probably inserting the word property there. I can edit that if I want to. Just lots of uh, different options here. And what I like about it is that the way you can customize this are pretty much the ways that are important. It doesn't give you too many options so that it makes it confusing. It just gives you only the things that you're most likely going to want to change if the need arises. So this is a very good plugin. I've been really, really happy with it. I think it does an awesome job. It's definitely worth checking out if you're selling properties or any kind of product that could potentially involve financing. It's just a really easy way for them to figure that out. One other plugin I want to show you from Elegant Themes is called the Divi Builder. And this was something that I was actually thinking I would use it all the time. But as it turns out, I've only been using it in a few select cases. So I won't say this is like always the best option, at least for me. But there are definitely times when it can be very, very helpful just in terms of organizing the appearance of certain things on your website. And uh, I'll just show you two pages on my blog right now where I'm actively using this. One page is right here, the Gear Up page. And see as we scroll down, see See how these images kind of fade in and just show up as I scroll down and that right there and also this button right here that's being controlled with the Divi Builder. Uh, this too. Every single thing you see on the left side here in the body of this page is being organized with the Divi Builder. And I'll show you really quickly uh, how this works. If we go in here to edit this page, so when we scroll down here, the Divi Builder works like this. You can create these different sections on the page where certain things will show up. So for example, on this page at the very top, you see a video with some text beneath it, and then you see this list of these different images on the left and the right. So if we kind of go and take a look at this again you'll see where that video is so that's this thing right here gear up video then you see this text that's what this thing is right here you see these five different uh, images on each side you can see those right here and then you see the text beneath it and then another image so that's here. And what makes this nice is, let's say if I want to quick rearrange this stuff, like I've got these different chunks of content and I want to change where these things are showing up. It's really easy to do that once you're using the Divi Builder and everything's in place. Say if I wanted the video to show up after the text. Let's go ahead and preview that now and see what it looks like. Okay, so now you can see text first, then the video. Or let's say, what if I wanted to switch these two things? So right now you'll see postcard templates on the left and then how to write great offers here on the right. Let's say if we switch these up a little bit. 
and then put this over here. I mean, heck, we could do anything we want. It's, it's really, really easy. You just drag and drop wherever you want things to be. So now blind offer templates is at the left, voicemail packages on the right up at the top. So let's preview this again. Alrighty. Blind offers here on the left, voicemail on the right. I mean, I hope I'm kind of explaining how this works. And I can tell you, if you were trying to do this without the Divi Builder, it would be quite a bit more of a hassle because you'd have to like actually copy and paste text and delete images and, and reinsert them in certain places. And things would almost certainly not be formatted correctly and it would just kind of look messed up. And this just makes it really easy to do that with ease. And it's always going to look good. And it's also mobile responsive. So things will sort of reposition themselves as as they need to. Um, as you can see, if we kind of move this, you know, once it gets narrower, everything kind of falls into place. So it's just a, a really nice plugin to use. And if you're somebody who just needs help organizing things a little bit better on each one of your posts or pages, this could be a great way to do that. And I'll also say once you've got things organized in a good fashion that you want to keep reusing, it's very easy to save to library. So say if you've got like a property listing and everything is laid out exactly the way you want it to be, you can do that and then very quickly pull up that template again in the future for all your future listings. And whenever you want to insert a new module like this, there's all kinds of different types of content you can insert. So say if you wanted like an audio clip or a video or an image or a gallery or a map. I mean, this kind of thing is like very, very ideal to use with creating property listings because pretty much everything you could imagine that you would want a property listing to include, you can do that with this. And especially with the ability to save it as a template and pull it back up in the future. I mean, it could make the process easier than ever once you've got these templates created and in place. So this could definitely be a nice one to check out for pretty much any kind of WordPress site. But, you know, in my case, specifically a real estate listing site, if you're running a business, anything like mine, this could be a really nice tool to have at your disposal. Okay, now moving on to the 10th and final plugin that we're going to talk about in this video. This one is actually the only plugin that I have not used myself yet. However, the reason I'm talking about this is because I've heard quite a bit about this and also the rating of this particular plugin is called Estat is excellent. Like that's an insanely good rating that you just don't get unless you're doing something right. And the whole idea behind this plugin is to make it really, really easy for you to create organized, good looking property listings. If we go to the company's website right here, Estatic comes uh, in a few different pricing categories. You can get it for free. And just based on what I'm seeing here, it looks like the free version will work for most people. If you're a small shop, say if you're just one person running your own real estate business, this could totally work. Whereas if you're running like a bigger company or agency, then you might want one of these other options. But if we go back and just take a look at the demo, just so you can see what this looks like. These are the different listings created with Estatic. They've also got this little mortgage calculator up here. Looks like it's not quite as uh, informative as the WordPress amortization calculator I talked about earlier in this video, but it's kind of a nice thing just to have available if you want. But if we go ahead and just click on the first one of these listings, just check out what it looks like. So as you can see, this is what the listings look like. It's got all helpful information here. You can even integrate video if you want to at the very bottom. You can just click on these tabs and it'll shoot you down to the appropriate part on the listing. So it just kind of makes it easy to create well-organized, good-looking listings. And from what I've seen, it looks like this plugin is actually compatible with the Divi Builder, which I just talked about in the previous segment of this video. So if you've got that, this could very well work with that too. And you also have these different filtering tools right here. So say if you've got like a ton of properties on your site and the person wants to only filter by certain categories, they can do that over here too. And I believe uh, Aesthetic actually has their own themes as well. So if you're like starting from scratch and you don't even have a theme, you can check out these two options as well. And then obviously the plugin would either be replaced by this theme or it would kind of work hand in hand with the theme. I guess I'm not really sure how that works, but either way, that's not a bad price to pay for a theme, especially if it's got great ratings and if it works exactly the right way for your business. So um, again, I have not used this plugin, unfortunately, but uh, just based on everything I've seen and heard about it, it seems like a pretty solid option. So if you're trying to 
build a selling website and you have a need to organize listings and create them in a way that just looks good, this could definitely be a nice one to check out. So that's it. I appreciate you checking out this video. Hopefully you found at least one or two plugins that you can integrate with your WordPress site if you're running a WordPress site. And I will say plugins actually change quite a bit from year to year. I'm recording this video in mid 2017. So all these plugins are pretty good at this point in time. But if you're watching this video in like 2019 or 2020, there may be a lot of changes that have happened to these. So that's just worth bearing in mind. And I also realized there's a lot of plugins out there that I've probably never seen or heard of. So if you know of a great WordPress plugin that I didn't mention here, by all means, feel free to mention it in the comments beneath this video. And I'd love to check them out and find out more about what you're using in your business. So that's it. Thanks again for watching this video. And I wish you all the best with creating the best website you possibly can for your business.